Hi, my name is Mike Houston. I'm a product line manager with Bot Stopper in charge of commercial dimming. I want to talk to you a little bit today about digital lighting management and the dimming and daylighting functions that we've got built in. Okay, I'm going to go right into some of the product features um, and, and some of the benefits to you because I want to make sure you guys are really familiar with it. So, this is the enhanced loom controller. This one happens to be called an LMRC312. It's a two relay, two channel room controller. The important things to note about this room controller, it will do on off switching if you just want to do switching. It will also do zero to 10 volt dimming. It has a couple of uh, terminals in here that you can connect the zero to 10 volt wires, the low voltage wires um, for dimming. You can mix and match. You can have channel one be switching, channel two be dimming within the same controller, okay? Uh, it comes in one, two, and three relay, three relay models. The one I'm showing you is a two relay model. The one on my demonstrator here is a three relay model. You might be able to see over here that I've got one, two, three zero to 10 volt terminals. The last terminal, this is a 300 series room controller. We'll talk about that later. Um, but this last terminal is our network, backnet segment network connection. We've also found that in a lot of areas, New York City, um, North Carolina, some areas in the country, your customer, your municipality may require that all these low voltage connections have to be running conduit. So what we've done is we've created a conduit adapter if you run into that situation. I'll show you what this looks like. It's basically a two-piece affair that I pull off the, the basic cover that comes with the unit. And Wattstopper will provide a conduit adapter. The conduit adapter consists of two pieces, an alternate cover, and you'll notice that all of the instructions and wiring diagrams are inside this cover, and then this conduit adapter. And what it basically does is just slides onto the bottom of the room controller. There are some holes in, in there for it to snap into, and once it's in, you now have a UL listed NEMA 1 enclosure with four half and three quarter eccentric knockouts for you to run your low voltage wires through. This was sent to UL just like this, so it is UL listed as a NEMA 1 enclosure as you see it, plenum rated. There's no need to put this in an auxiliary enclosure. If you want to, it's okay. This has a 70 degree C listing, much higher than most other devices that I'm seeing out in the market in the plenum space, so I don't, I, I am very confident that this won't overheat if you need to put it in a secondary enclosure. You know, as a product line manager, a lot of my job is to help engineering understand what does the, the customer expect from the product. Um, and I'm, I come from the field. I come from a lot of installations. And one of the things that was pretty interesting to me, the first time they showed me one of these at the engineering department, I said, oh, this is great. How does it mount? And so the first thing the guy does, the engineer, he's got his four square box on his desk, and he starts to mount this on the four square box. And I said, well, no, the four squares are usually upside down over the ceiling. So let's go do that. So he goes, okay. So he climbs up a ladder, and he turns it upside down, and the first thing that happens, the mounting screws fell out. Okay, so I said, all right, we got a problem there. So we do have captive mounting screws. There's only two of them. The, this, this device, this box mounts to cover a four square box, and it mounts diagonally with these two screws. Okay, so we got that covered. And then I said, all right, wire it up. And he says, okay, come hold it. I said, well, no, 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 no. At 100 bucks an hour, I'm not gonna come hold it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't make a hundred bucks an hour. At my wage, I could hold it all day for it. But I do hear that union electricians, the, uh, the total cost is about a hundred bucks an hour in, in a lot of areas of the country. So we came up with a little tether strap. Again, this was UL listed this way. So this tether strap, it's got a funny shaped hook that fits perfectly into the hole on the side of a four square box. So you can hang your room controller, make all your wire terminations, and then just simply screw this in place. Just some of the things that we, that we really wanted to cover from an installation standpoint to make sure that this is easy for the contractor to install. Certainly one of our, our main design principles with, with Digital Lighting Manage is to make it easy. One of the other real key features of the enhanced room controllers, the 2 and 300 series, is their ability to monitor current. This room controller that's here right now is monitoring the total current that's being consumed by this demo. It's an important distinction. We're not monitoring current on a channel by channel basis. We're monitoring the entire load coming into this room controller. In fact, if I can show you a cutaway of this, this black wire, this is the incoming hot. The first thing it does when it enters this enclosure is it goes through about a 50 cent piece size CT, current transformer. And, and so it is measuring the entire load, including the internal electronics. If you want to measure on a circuit by circuit basis, you'll need to buy single relay room controllers and you can get that granular. 
The thing about this and its current monitoring, it's monitoring right now, it can't tell you about it unless you have some sort of a screen, something that it can display on. I could plug my laptop computer into this and it would tell me its current consumption. If I had a fully segment network job, I could use my segment manager and see what the current uh, that this is consuming is. Okay, so the next product is the digital switch, the digital dimming wall switch, LMDM 101. There are three of them on this de demonstration board. Okay, the important features about this, it's a low voltage device. Okay, this just takes the Cat5e cable. There are two ports on the back of it. There's no in, there's no out. You'll see there's no trim pots, no adjustments, no dip switches. This is the entire switch. And so you plug an RJ45 cable in and the switch is good to go. The other thing that's really important about these switches, they are not load specific, okay? Right now, my first offering, our first offering for digital lighting management dimming is a zero to 10 volt dimming room controller. We're certainly working on more room controllers and as we launch those and roll those out, this same dimming wall switch will work for that. There may be a time when we have a, a room controller that will do incandescent dimming. This will then be an incandescent dimmer. Right now it's a zero to 10 volt fluorescent dimmer. If we decide to come out with a dolly-based room controller, this will be a dolly dimmer. The goal is that you don't have to replace your whole system just because we come out with new products. So as you can see, the way that this operates is tap the top for on, tap the bottom for off, press and hold the top to ramp up, press and hold the bottom to ramp down. It's pretty, pretty intuitive, pretty user friendly. You'll also see we've got seven LEDs on the side. And each LED has basically two levels of brightness. Don't know if you can see this on the video, but as I ramp down, those LEDs, they have an intermediate level of brightness. So you're actually getting 14 steps of indication. So you can, you can replicate 50%, 75% very well with this. The next switch I want to talk about is the digital dimming scene switch. This is the LMSW105. As, as I talked earlier, this is the only one that comes defaulted with scene buttons. The one I'm showing you here has engraving on it. This is just to give you an example of the engraving options that we have. But one of the important things here is these buttons can be changed. You can make them load buttons if you have a need for that. I'll give you an example of that in just a minute. So by default, this, this scene switch recalls four scenes, has master on off. So if I turn and hit the top one, all the loads come on. I hit the bottom, they all fade off. And the four scenes are pre-established from the factory. We've, we've given you four scenes. Scene one is all loads at 100%, scene two, 75, scene three, 50, and scene four, 25%. So if I hit scene button one, all the lights will go to 100. If I hit scene button four, you'll see all the lights will dim down to 25%. Those can easily be changed, and in a minute I'll show you how we set scenes. But what's really important is you don't have to set the scenes prior to installation or, or the, the device works as soon as it's installed. Part of our whole plug-and-go concept, we want the devices to work out of the box. 